Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my FC or K video, otherwise known as the Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin video, where we can enter one reading, specify the scale, and we'll get all three values there. This, of course, is part two. So what does that mean? Well, if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch this first and then come on back. There's a link. There's a little QR code thingy. I'll wait for you. We now join the program already in progress. All righty. So we left it off here with our reading table where we got the value and the scale. Now it's time to make a query where we can calculate the other three, right? In the first Fahrenheit to Celsius video, we went over the equations of how do you get from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. Kelvin is basically on the same degree unit scale as Celsius. You just subtract 273.15, right? Scientists figure out that absolute zero is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So to get to Kelvin, that's easy. And to get from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, you just basically convert to Celsius and then do some subtraction. So it's real easy. So just like last time, let's create a query, query design. Let's bring in the reading table. Then we can shut these down here. Bring in that star. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start off with the temperature Celsius. So whether, regardless of what the scale is, we're just going to display all three. So if you give me Celsius, I'm still going to show you Celsius. It's just going to be the same thing, right? And we'll use switch because it's better than using, what, we'd have to have one, two, three nested if functions. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. Now, I have found when writing complicated functions like this, it's easier to break it up into multiple lines in here and write it almost like you're writing Visual Basic code for those of you who know how to program because it's just easier to read and even to write than it is to try to put it all together in one big long line like you have to in Excel, right? So we're going to start off with temp C, if I can type today, temp C. All right, this is going to be equal to switch. And whatever is going to go inside the switch function is going to be like this, but I'm going to break it up like that. Just trust me, you'll see how easier this is to read, okay? Then in here, and you can even put a couple spaces in here if you want to to make it easier, right? All right, what's the first switch thing? What's the first if statement? Well, it's basically if temp scale is Fahrenheit, then comma, what's the value gonna be equal to? Well, the Fahrenheit calculation, and I'm basically taking this from the last video, is gonna be round, because we wanna round it, right? Temp value, 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 <laughs> minus 32, parentheses, times 5 divided by 9, and we're going to round all of that to one decimal place. Okay, that's the first switch condition. Now we got to put a comma after it, right? And we get the next switch condition. Same thing, if the temp scale equals Celsius, then this is literally just going to be temp scale, because it's we're giving it Celsius, we're giving it back Celsius. All right, comma, and what's the last one? Well, if temp scale equals Kelvin, then we're going to round the temp value minus 273.15 to one value. And, I mean, if you want to round Celsius itself, you can. That's up to you. But you can see how much easier this is to read than the other way. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. And watch this. If you hit OK and then click off of it and then come back to it again, Access rewrites it like that. It gets rid of all your fancy spacing because it doesn't care. That's what it really wants. But I just think it's easier to write it the other way first. All right? I wish it would save that, but who's keeping who's keeping that list of stuff for the dev team? Sammy, is that you? Are you keeping the list? Put that on the list. If you put something in here <laughs> in the query designer. Keep the SQL formatted the way I left it. <laughs> All right. But if we run this now, there we go. Check, make sure it's correct, right? If we give it zero Kelvin, that's negative 273 Celsius. If I give it zero Celsius, oh, we got a we got a nothing in there. We gotta we gotta take a look at what's going on here. I got something I got something written wrong. That shouldn't have done that. Let's go take a look. What did I do? Let's take a peek. Let's see here. Temp scale equals C. Temp scale. Oh, temp scale. That's the problem. Not temp scale. Temp value. Right? That's why I put a C there instead of it. Okay. I was just... See, sometimes I'm talking to you guys and I'm not paying attention. 
All right, looks much better. Okay. All right, let's save this while we're at it. This will be my reading cue. All right, let's do let's do Fahrenheit next. Okay, come in here, zoom in. I'm gonna paste in the stuff from Celsius. So I put it in the clipboard. We're gonna make temp F. Okay, now if we're Fahrenheit, then all we need is this. All right, just temp scale or the temp value. We just had that. That was what was in my clipboard, remember? Okay, so temp value. I'm gonna stick it up here. Okay. And I'm going to cut that out too. All right. So temp C, we're going to put in here round temp value times 9 divided by 5 plus 32, comma 1, and then close it. There's my convert. Okay. And to convert to Kelvin is actually a little trickier. I'm just going to copy and paste it because I already have it in my clipboard. To my little notepad here it's basically you're basically converting to celsius and then subtracting 273.15 that's the formula there it's the basically the same thing as what we're doing okay all right hit okay let's save it take a peek make sure that's working good all right zero fahrenheit is zero fahrenheit zero celsius is 32 zero kelvin is minus 459.7 Fahrenheit looks about right. All right, last up is Kelvin. And once again, you get the point at this point, right? I'm just going to copy and paste it from my notepad instead of making you sit here watching me type. Okay, temperature K. If it's Fahrenheit, there's the equation. Basically, it's convert to Celsius and then add 273. Okay, um, Celsius and then Kelvin is just the same temp value. And run it. And there we go. Looks about right. Anybody want to check my math? Go for it. I spot checked a few of these with Google. It looked good. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got our table built. We got our query built. In the next part, in part three, we're going to build up a little form. All right. This guy. Where we can pick the scale right here. Have a little combo box and all that good stuff. That's coming up in part three. Tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Members, you can watch it right now because I'm fixing to record it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, folks. Live long and prosper. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, 
queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.